The latest reaction to the Fed's bond buying program comes from China today. The Chinese say they'll crack down on the so-called hot money that may be flowing into China from the United States. Joining us this morning to talk not only about those questions from Kevin Warsh that you heard uh, a moment ago, but also China's latest moves, Tony Crescenzi, a senior vice president and market strategist at PIMCO, joins us. He's also the author of five books. His latest is The Keynesian Endpoint. He's in Newport Beach, California this morning. Um, so, t <laughs> good morning, Tony. Let's start with uh, with Warsh and those comments. It seems like in, in that quote we just played there that, that Warsh was making the point, we can't fix everything for you. On the fiscal side, Congress has got to do something. But the market then raising the question today, is that saying something about questioning, questioning his support for quantitative easing? What do you think Warsh meant? Well, one of the things that Walsh is thinking about is the way the market functioning will be changing in the Treasury market. Of course, the Fed is not just a referee, it's a player. It's become a, pl a price setter. And at some point, and since so many securities are, are uh, valued against Treasuries, to what extent do we know the, what the value of those securities are when we're trying to compare it against Treasuries where we don't know necessarily what the value of Treasuries would otherwise be if not for the actions of the Federal Reserve, which of course is purchasing nearly all the issuance of Treasuries between yeah. here and the end of June. And so there becomes dislocation and to restore market functioning where China, for example, is a big participant, Japan, etc., cetera, uh, might be challenging in the future the more that the Fed stays involved because these players might disengage as participants and then restoring uh, and, and getting these players to come back might be a challenge. So in some ways, does, does China do that cooling off for us by, by putting in those capital controls? It probably, and most of the emerging markets, can't really control capital in the way that they desire because they, after all, are better places to invest, it seems, these days. They have very good demographics, very good initial conditions, as we would say. And so mm -hmm. money will flow there because there are opportunities. For example, think about the country Brazil, the median age of 28 compared to 44 in Greece and, of course, the United States at 38, Japan at 44. It seems that demographics favor a country like Brazil, and, and so does the fact that it has big national resources helping it and of course uh, the the partnership with China and so since the opportunities seem greater elsewhere money will flow where opportunity is best and right. of course it seems like it's those countries and so there will be a limit to the extent that uh, uh, these countries can control capital flowing in except through financial assets uh, and even there there'll be limits on how much they can control. Well, China's vice finance minister said, though, that, that, that they're trying to head off a shock, essentially, a wall of cash coming in and flooding the markets there. Is that overstating things? I mean, money will chase yield, but, but do you really expect there to be this, this push towards the Brazils, the wave coming towards China? Well, think about uh, this in, in terms of from the ground, in terms of what's happening, in terms of goods and services sold. In China, car sales are exceeding those of the United States, uh, 16, 17 million pace versus uh, 11, 12 million in the United States. And it's expected that the sales will continue to increase. So what would a automobile manufacturer do or a part supplier or those who supply raw materials to these entities? Wouldn't they want to be investing in China mm -hmm. nonetheless? And so it's going to be very difficult for China and other nations to prevent this kind of opportunistic movement of capital uh, and of, of course they'll want to prevent it from being uh, overblown in the sense that they'll want to prevent inflation uh, and that will be the biggest challenge perhaps that they'll face is the movement upward in inflation that results from overheating of economies uh, as we go forward.